Let's talk about analytical thinking. Analytical thinking involves identifying and defining a problem and then solving it by using data in an organized, step-by-step -step manner. So as data analysts, how do we think analytically? Well, to answer that question, we will now talk about a second set of five, the five key aspects to analytical thinking. They are visualization, strategy, problem orientation, correlation, and finally, big picture and detail-oriented thinking. Let's start with visualization. In data analytics, visualization is the graphical representation of information. Some examples include graphs, maps, or other design elements. Visualization is important because visuals can help data analysts understand and explain information more effectively. Think about it like this. If you are trying to explain the Grand Canyon to someone, using words would be much more challenging than showing them a picture. A visualization of the Grand Canyon would help you make your point much quicker. Now let's talk about the second part of analytical thinking, being strategic. With so much data available, having a strategic mindset is key to staying focused and on track. Strategizing helps data analysts see what they want to achieve with the data and how they can get there. Strategy also helps improve the quality and usefulness of the data we collect. By strategizing, we know all our data is valuable and can help us accomplish our goals. Next up on the analytical thinking checklist, being problem-oriented. Data analysts use a problem-oriented approach in order to identify, describe, and solve problems. It's all about keeping the problem top of mind throughout the entire project. For example, say a data analyst is told about the problem of a warehouse constantly running out of supplies. They would move forward with different strategies and processes, but the number one goal would always be solving the problem of keeping inventory on the shelves. Data analysts also ask a lot of questions. This helps improve communication and saves time while working on a solution. An example of that would be surveying customers about their experiences, using a product, and building insights from those questions to improve that product. This leads us to the fourth quality of analytical thinking, being able to identify a correlation between two or more pieces of data. A correlation is like a relationship. You can find all kinds of correlations in data. Maybe it's the relationship between the length of your hair and the amount of shampoo you need. Or maybe you notice a correlation between a rainier season leading to a high number of umbrellas being sold. But as you start identifying correlations in data, there's one thing you always want to keep in mind. Correlation does not equal causation. In other words, just because two pieces of data are both trending in the same direction, that doesn't necessarily mean they are all related. We'll learn more about that later. And now, the final piece of the analytical thinking puzzle, big picture thinking. This means being able to see the big picture as well as the details. A jigsaw puzzle is a great way to think about this. Big picture thinking is like looking at a complete puzzle. You can enjoy the whole picture without getting stuck on every tiny piece that went into making it. If you only focus on individual pieces, you wouldn't be able to see past that, which is why big picture thinking is so important. It helps you zoom out and see possibilities and opportunities. This leads to exciting new ideas or innovations. On the flip side, detail-oriented thinking is all about figuring out all of the aspects that will help you execute a plan. In other words, the pieces that make up your puzzle. There are all kinds of problems in the business world that can benefit from employees who have both a big picture and a detail-oriented way of thinking. Most of us are naturally better at one or the other, but you can always develop the skills to fit both pieces together. And now that you know the five aspects of analytical thinking, visualization, strategy, problem orientation, correlation, and big picture and detail-oriented thinking, you can put them to work for you when you're working with data. And as you continue through this course, you'll learn how. Let's recap what we've learned about analytical thinking so far. The five key aspects are visualization, strategy, problem orientation, correlation, and using big picture and detail-oriented thinking. And we've seen how you already use them in your everyday life. 
We also talked about how different people naturally use certain types of thinking, but that you can absolutely grow and develop the skills that might not come as easily to you. This means you can become a versatile thinker, which is a very important part of data analysis. You might naturally be an analytical thinker, but you can learn to think creatively and critically and be great at all three. The more ways you can think, the easier it is to think outside the box and come up with fresh ideas. But why is it important to think in different ways? Well, because in data analysis, solutions are almost never right in front of you. You need to think critically to find out the right questions to ask, but you also need to think creatively to get new and unexpected answers. Let's talk about some of the questions data analysts ask when they're on the hunt for a solution. Here's one that will come up a lot. What is the root cause of a problem? A root cause is the reason why a problem occurs. If we can identify and get rid of a root cause, we can prevent that problem from happening again. A simple way to wrap your head around root causes is with a process called the five whys. In the five whys, you ask why five times to reveal the root cause. The fifth and final answer should give you some useful and sometimes surprising insights. Here's an example of the five whys in action. Let's say you wanted to make a blueberry pie but couldn't find any blueberries. You'd be trying to solve a problem by asking, why can't I make a blueberry pie? The answer would be, there are no blueberries at the store. There's why number one. So you then ask, why were there no blueberries at the store? And discover that the blueberry bushes don't have enough fruit this season. That's why number two. Next, you'd ask, why was there not enough fruit? This would lead you to the fact that birds were eating all the berries. Why number three, asked and answered. Now we get to why number four. Ask why a fourth time, and the answer would be that although the birds normally prefer mulberries and don't eat blueberries, the mulberry bushes didn't produce fruit this season. So the birds are eating blueberries instead. And finally, we get to why number five which should reveal the root cause. A late frost damaged the mulberry bushes, so they didn't produce any fruit. So, you can't make a blueberry pie because of a late frost months ago. See how the five wives can reveal some very surprising root causes? This is a great trick to know, and it can be a very helpful process in data analysis. Another question commonly asked by data analysts is, where are the gaps in our process? For this, Many people will use something called gap analysis. Gap analysis lets you examine and evaluate how a process works currently in order to get where you want to be in the future. Businesses conduct gap analysis to do all kinds of things, such as improve a product or become more efficient. The general approach to gap analysis is understanding where you are now compared to where you want to be. Then you can identify the gaps that exist between a current and future state and determine how to bridge them. A third question that data analysts ask a lot is, what did we not consider before? This is a great way to think about what information or procedure might be missing from a process so you can identify ways to make better decisions and strategies moving forward. These are just a few examples of the kinds of questions data analysts use at their jobs every day. As you begin your career, I'm sure you'll think of a whole lot more. The way data analysts think and ask questions plays a big part and how businesses make decisions. That's why analytical thinking and understanding how to ask the right questions can have such a huge impact on the overall success of a business. Later, we'll talk more about how data-driven decisions can lead to successful outcomes. Let's look at the concept of data-driven decision-making and why it's more likely to lead to successful outcomes. You might remember that data-driven decision-making involves using facts to guide business strategy. Data analysts can tap into the power of data to do all kinds of amazing things. With data, they can gain valuable insights, verify their theories or assumptions, better understand opportunities and challenges, support an objective, help make a plan, and much more.